So in this set of problems, we're going to just try and start answering which resonance form is most important. And here we've got three examples. So in order to solve these types of problems, we have to bear in mind the rules for determining which resonance forms are the most important. Which are, first of all, we want to minimize charges as much as possible. So the less charge there is, the better. Secondly, we prefer to have full octets rather than an atom with an empty octet. And thirdly, if there's a negative charge present, we put that negative charge on the atom which stabilizes it the best. So in other words, is the least basic uh, atom. And the sort of the corollary to this with a positive charge is if, if there is an atom with less than a full octet, for example, a carbocation, uh, place that, that atom with less than a full octet on the atom best able to stabilize having less than a full octet. So let's look at this first example here, comparing A and B. And we'll go down this list and try and determine which of these two resonance forms is most important. So first of all, minimization of charge. Do we notice any differences in the charge between A and B? Well, A has a positive charge, B has a positive charge. So there's no difference between the two. So therefore, we can't really use this as a criteria to determine which resonance form is more important. So we have to go down our list a little bit further. Let's look at full octets. Does any atom on A have less than a full octet? Well, we do have a carbocation present right here. This carbocation has only six valence electrons, whereas this oxygen here has eight valence electrons. On the right-hand side, this oxygen has eight valence electrons. And this carbon also has eight valence electrons. So full octets being preferred this resonance form B should be favored over resonance form A, since resonance form A has a carbon with less than a full octet. Right. So B is the preferred resonance form in this example. What about the second example? So again, going down our list, minimization of charge. Are there any differences in charges between A and B? Well, no. A has a single positive charge. B has a single positive charge. So there's no difference in charges, so we can't use that to differentiate. What about full octets being preferred? Are there any atoms on A which have less than a full octet? Well, yes, we have a carbocation which has less than a full octet, but in B, we also have another uh, carbocation which has less than a full octet. So there's no, again, way to differentiate between these two. So let's go down a little bit further to 3A and 3B. Now, negative charge being present, that's actually not present here. But there is an atom with less than a full octet. There is a carbocation. So it says it's best if you place the carbocation or the charge on the atom best able to stabilize it. So between A and B, is there one of these positive charges which is going to be more stable? Well, if we remember what we know about the stabilization of carbocations, this is on a secondary carbon. Whereas over here, this carbocation is on a tertiary carbon. So this is going to be a more stable resonance form, uh, or it has going to be a more important resonance form than A. So it's going to make a greater contribution to the resonance hybrid. This is going to be more important. All right, so lastly, let's look at this final set of resonance forms. So between these two, what do we notice uh, in terms of the charges? Well, they both have a negative charge, right? One's on nitrogen, one's on sulfur but there's no difference in the number of charges. So that's not a differentiating factor. Is there any atom with less than a full octet? Well, sulfur here has eight. Uh, nitrogen also has eight. And carbon in all cases has eight. So there's no differentiation on that point. What about negative charge? So here we've got a negative charge on nitrogen. And here we've got a negative charge on sulfur. So what is preferred to have a negative charge on nitrogen or a negative charge on sulfur? If we're going to compare negative charges on nitrogen and sulfur, this is going to come down to some trends you might have learned if you've learned about acidity. So actually, let's let's bring in a periodic table here. This is going to help. All right. So the stability of negative charge increases as we go from left to right along the periodic table. This is more. So uh, as we go from carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine, Negative charge is most stable on fluorine, then oxygen, then nitrogen, then carbon. That's because fluorine is more electronegative and it'll stabilize that negative charge better 
and likewise oxygen compared to nitrogen compared to carbon. Okay, now as we go down the periodic table, the atoms get bigger. So the negative charge is going to be spread out over a greater volume. So that negative charge is going to become more stable because it's more diffuse. So the more diffuse, the less concentrated charge is, the more stable it's going to be. So that's why a negative charge on bromine is more stable than it is on chlorine, than it is on fluorine. Okay. Now when we compare sulfur to nitrogen, notice that sulfur is not only to the right, but it's also down. So sulfur is going to be large and it's going to be more stable uh, to have a negative charge on sulfur than it would be on nitrogen. So that means that this resonance form on the right is going to be more important to the hybrid than the resonance form is on the left where the negative charge is on nitrogen. Okay, so this form is more important than this form and that's the answer to that third part of B1.